Hello everyone and welcome to this new video in which I will try and show you how to install a Zigbee 2 MQTT on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, first, uh, what we are going to need is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, any would do. I am using a Raspberry Pi 3B. We need a CC debugger, a Zigbee sniffer stick and a downloader cable. And I will leave these links uh, in the description. And for the rest, we will need the website of Zigbee2MQTT, which is uh, Zigbee2MQTT.io. Uh, I've got it over here. So at first, getting started, what do we need? Well, those things. Uh, well, you can get them from here. And over here are all the supported Zigbee devices, which are, well, essentially any Zigbee device uh, you ever want. And so what we want to do is we want to flash the uh, sniffer stick. And you can see over here how it is uh, connected. I have some pictures of how I connected mine. Uh, it needs to be like this. If you uh, connect it uh, the other way around, uh, you may fry your stick and have to wait, well, another month for a new one. So you have this red stripe on the downloader cable, which needs to be connected like this to your Zigbee sh stick. And well, it all should look something like this when it is connected. So you connect the downloader cable to the CC de debugger, and like that to your Zigbee stick. All right, when you have done that, uh, you need a smart RF uh, flash programmer software from Texas Instruments. And you need to create uh, an account over here uh, to get the free software. And if you have downloaded and installed that, you need to install the CC debugger uh, driver, which I, I uh, have already installed both the uh, programs. So uh, now we connect the uh, CC debugger and the uh, sniffer stick to our computer. So we need two USB ports for that. And if the light on the CC debugger lights green, we are ready to proceed. If it does not light green, uh, if most likely if you hit the reset button over here, uh, it will turn green. And we need to download this zip file. And in that zip file, there are two files and we need to extract the hex file. And if we extract that hex file and put it somewhere, we can then go to the flash programmer. We can then go to the flash programmer uh, and select all the options as you see over here, which are also the same options as on the screenshot on the website. And you need to select your hex file, which for me is on my desktop. And then we can perform actions and then we wait a little bit uh, until it's flashed. All right, and now that the uh, stick is flashed, we can uh, pull out both of the USB cables and disconnect the CC debugger uh, from the uh, Zigbee stick and connect the Zigbee stick to our Raspberry Pi. Now that we have flashed our Zigbee stick, we need to install MQTT, which is the protocol uh, Zigbee to MQTT uses to communicate to other uh, yeah, the, uh, home automation platforms. So we need to do sudo apt-get install mosquito mosquito clients. So we will install that. Yes, uh, right. I was lazy. I forgot to update and upgrade. So let me do that first. <laughs> this also shows why it is important to first update your Raspberry Pi. Otherwise, things won't work. All right, now that the update is done, which took forever, uh, we can try to install Mosquito again. 
and now it seems to work all right <laughs> all right now we can create a user using this command uh, my user is going to be called mqtt but if you want to call it something else you can uh, well remove those last four characters and well put in your own and i need to copy it first before i paste all right now we can set our password and re-enter it so now we need to tell mosquito to only allow the secure user and not just everyone by editing this file and adding those two lines over here and then we can save and exit and then we need to go to, to the RC local to let Mosquito start at boot by adding this line before the exit zero. So over here and save that as well. Now we need to restart our Raspberry Pi for Mosquito to fully install and set up and get running. So restart session. All right, now that we are logged back in, we need to go to the, uh, well, the rest of the guides on uh, the uh, CP2MQTT website. And we first need to check if the USB stick is recognized. And in my case, it is. So we can proceed to step two to install some things. All right, now that that is installed, we can install Node.js. All right, now we need to check our Node and NPM versions. This one is version 10.17, so that is above the version 10.x, which is required. And NPM is 6.11, which is also higher than required. So now we can clone the GitHub repository, which actually contains a lot of files. Uh, now that that is done, we need to give it some rights, go to the directory and say install. This could take some time. All right, now that it is done, uh, it says it found some vulnerabilities, but you don't have to worry about that. Now we need to, uh, uh, well, edit our config and our MQTT server is localhost, so that's correct. But we need to enter our username and password we created earlier. And uh, so we need to alter this. And you need to, uh, well, make sure that server, the hashtag, user and password are all in line. Because if they are not, it will not work. So put in your username over here. with mqtt in my case and my passwords all right then exit save all right now that we have done that we can start zigbee to mqtt to see if everything is working and everything seems to be working like normally all right now we can uh, exit this by doing ctrl c and now we need to, uh, well, let it start uh, by itself at system startup. So we enter this command, paste all this text in there, exit and save. Now we need to, well, systemctl start. And now we can see if we create successfully created the service and we have so we can control C out of there and if we now enable this service we the uh, sigb 2 mqtt will uh, start by itself uh, well when uh, the Raspberry Pi starts up also so now uh, I am going to uh, connect it to my uh, domotics uh, system uh, for which you can use uh, the domotics zigbee2mqtt plugin 
uh, which we can find over here. And it's as easy as logging into your Domotics uh, via SSH, running those two commands, and then restart Domotics. Uh, it's not really that hard. If you have followed me through this, you can do this as well. Uh, but I already have already uh, done it, so I cannot do it again. So I need to go to my Domotics instance and go to the hardware and now I have over here the zigbee2mqtt so I will call it zigbee2mqtt number two because I have already got one now I need to enter the IP address uh, which in my case is 192.168.2. Uh, let me check quickly 185 and which is MQT, QTT and my passwords and I'll say pairing active and add. Now that is, that is added, we can go into our log and see connected, journey new devices available. Uh, well, it did a whole bunch of things, which essentially means that if we go over here and go to pairing devices, Pairing devices, I said, yeah. Uh, we just set permit join to true. And if we are uh, done pairing our devices, we need to go into the hardware of Demotics again, go to Zigbee 2MQTT and set it to not active. Uh, and then, uh, well, uh, uh, alter the config. And what that's, that means is then you can uh, pair other new devices so uh, bad guys can do it as well. So now you can go to your supported devices and in my case I have a uh, Xiaomi, Xiaomi Switch. You can click over here and it says over here how you can pair it. Which is really easy and if you have paired it you can uh, check it in your Demotics and it will automatically show up. So uh, I hope everything was clear and uh, you got it running uh, yourself. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, ask them in the comments down below, but better is to ask them on the Demotics uh, forum or the GitHub of Zigbee2MQTT. Uh, over there are much more qualified people to help you get the right answer to uh, well, your question. So I'll thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.